Yes. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We'll continue with our tafsir, Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah number six. I think we have finished the first five ayahs. So, in the ladina kafar wa sa'an alayhim a'adhartahum amtun dhirhum la yubnun. Khatam Allahu ala qulubihum wa ala sami'ihim wa ala abusarihim gishagatu wa lahum adhabun azim. So, after discussing the various types of believers, first of all, that the Quran is a guidance with all the aspects which we have discussed. We'll not go into more details in the future. We'll refer to that, at least in a summary. Uh, then the various types of believers, if there are two types, so Mu'minin, the original one, Mushri, who the originally Mushrikeen, and those who were Ahl Kitab, or or both, anyway, the same principles apply to all of them. After they have Mu'minin, they will become one category, and all uh, uh, aspects apply to them. Uh, Iman Ghib al Ghaib, living in the unseen, uh, establishing prayers, spending from that what they have been bestowed upon them. They believe in that what has been revealed before and what uh, has revealed uh, now with Muhammad, and they believe, with most importantly, in the day of resurrection. So then it goes to the opposite of believer. That's in the inner the inner cover. So I'm not him. I undertum. I'm not to do him. 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 Clearly, it's at the from the context is very clear that it's addressing said type of disbeliever. Uh, because it says, uh, uh, I will go to the meaning of kafir and the meaning of khatam Allah and the in detail. But let's say uh, those who have committed kufr or those who have rejected faith. Uh, it is equal, it's either you warn them or you don't warn them, they will not believe. So it's speaking about people at the time of Islam who are indulged in kufr and became so stubborn and in denial that there's no hope in them. Khatam Allah, so don't, this is telling the Prophet, don't bother your mind about them, that they may still become believers. Some of them may become, but in generally, such as the leaders of the disbelievers, like uh, Abu Jahl, etc., etc., these are as Allah said, Khatam Allah, Allah has sealed their hearts and uh, on, on their eyes and on, uh, on, uh, on, in, on their hearing and in the, so she sealed their hearts and their hearings and on their eyes there is a gishawa, there is a, there's a, there's a uh, like, um, what you call gishawa is like uh, when someone cannot see properly like because of uh, what they call it, uh, the, um, yeah, I will remember the name anyway in English. Or you can have a cataract, like a cataract. So you you say things blurred. There's a blurring of the eyes, and they will have a, a big punishment. So let's go to the various components. Or maybe it's good to take a look to the uh, various translation. How the translator struggled with this, with the, in the usual place. This is IslamicAwakened.com. Quran slash two slash six two being said the number of surah slash six the number of ayah. Uh, slash default.html. So it, that's the general structure. So you just put the, uh, the number of the surah and then the number of the ayah. And then you get there. And they give you a complete list of what's available in various uh, translations and also things which have been uh, deprecated or uh, for forsaken and uh, more or less a general consensus that uh, it's not proper and also give you the non-Muslim and, and Orientalist translations. And so let us see uh, how they did with the word of uh, Kafaru for Sir Muhammad Asad, who is originally European and blessed Islam, obviously, in the, in the, after the, second world, uh, the First World War, and died recently with an important Islam personality of the 20th century, not very recently, but late in the 20th century. He said, behold, as for those who are bent on denying the truth. So he's translating Kafaru, bent on denying the stubbornly denial, bent on denying the truth. It's quite a good translation, but it's uh, translating it into a sentence. Alladina Kafar, those who committed Kafar, he translated as those who are bent to denying the, on den bent on denying the truth. It is one to them, whether you warn them or you don't warn them, they will not believe. So that's, that's, the, the, that's this attempt. Pictol is having a lesser one, but as for the, uh, for the disbelievers, he said this, he make it like, uh, uh, it is not very literal because it says, Ladina kafar, those who have committed kufr. And he said the, the kafirin, the disbelievers. So it's not very accurate in that sense. But uh, those who committed kufr are also kafirin, obviously. But the, if the Quran uses them for Ladina kafar, it, it hints to something, a certain act, not only a description.
So uh, Assad is uh, is better in this one. Normally, Pictal is one of the most accurate translators, but in, there will be always places where another one is more accurate than that one. Whether you warn them or you don't warn them, I'm reading it in more modern English. He was written whether though warn them. No, I, 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 I'm not using this though. I'm using you. Uh, or you, I think there's a version of uh, more in the current English rather than the Shakespearean English or something like that. Them, not, it is all, either you want them or you don't know on them. Uh, it is all one for, for them. So the same. So on Alim, there's no difference. Uh, they believe not. So that's, that's okay. Uh, uh, for example, we have... Uh, Shakir is trying to do it differently, say, surely those who disbelieve, disbelieve. So it makes it a verb rather than a description. So it's more, more literal, but uh, the rest is quite similar. Uh, we have, for example, Yusuf Ali. Is, is that have a better translation actually for, for, those who, for those who reject faith? So making it like the opposite of faith is rejecting faith is kufr, which is in, in, the, in the meaning, maybe linguistically, not, uh, not, not uh, uh, but it, it, it gives the meaning quite, uh, the deeper meaning quite reasonably. Those who reject faith, reject or accept faith, reject or denying the truth, rejecting faith. So it's very similar, but a little bit shorter than Muhammad Asad. Muhammad Asad gives a little bit some other flavor. And so it goes on. Let me see what the most, some of the Orientalists have done. For example, let us see. For example, Alpha John Albury, who is a good translator generally, as for the for the un, for the unbelievers, who use the unbelievers exactly like we thought, I like it is to them whether thou hast warned them or thou hast not. So again, using clear language on them, they do not believe. So similar to Victor, and and similarly, so there's not very much of a controversy. So that's that's why if you go to this translation site to have a basic idea, it's good to read all translations. For example, one of the said controversial deprecated also. Let us take one of them. For example, uh, this one, for example, uh, is Farid uh, al As for those whose faith is disbelief, oh, that's the mistake, their faith is disbelief. So this is, he made a mistake, connected, he's taking, taking uh, a, a theory of faith, which is like Jabr, uh, compulsion, yeah, there's no choice or something like that, which is a blatant error, obviously. So no wonder that this is regarded as controversial. It's not their faith to believe, no, no, because he wanted to make an universal for all time. That's not, that's not, there's nobody having faith to disbelieve. That's a mistake. We discussed a bit of Qadr last time. So that's the reason this has been controversial or rejected, which is a good reason. Yeah. yeah, some of them are similar to the other ones anyway. So that's, that's uh, it's good to go to the site and, and prepare even for the next halakha. Read maybe a few uh, uh, and uh, get acquainted with the various translations and, and uh, get the taste of uh, various issues there. So here we have the two new words of importance and concepts of importance. Uh, first one, kafar, those who have committed kufr, who did kafar. And he speaks about them. But let's see what is what the, the word kafara. Now, from a belief's point of view, from Quranic point of view, the kafir is the opposite of the woman. Kufr is opposite of iman. So that's the opposite. Linguistically, they have different words. Iman says come from amina, amin, iman, if'al, meaning uh, uh, feeling confident and trusting, which means that be really, really, be a real conviction, but also trusting and make the act of acceptance and witnessing. And that's the reason entering Islam, you have to witness ashad wal, you have to pronounce the shahad. It's not that they just believe without any pronunciation, it has to be an act of acceptance and declaration. Sometimes it's maybe not possible to declare it publicly for whatever reason, good or bad, bad reason, valid or invalid reasons, but at least in the heart there is the acceptance of pronunciation. If you cannot pronounce it, pronounce it in, with the tongue. In the heart there must be, otherwise not iman, just the mere uh, uh, mental uh, statement that this is true is not enough. I witness true and I'm committing to the truth. 
because the, the issues about subject of Iman said they are not like the subject of mathematics, like a Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem, if you don't accept it, then you are mental. You cannot do proper engineering, you cannot do proper physics or chemistry. You are stupid. Uh, nothing, nothing would be to be done. You will never be able to achieve anything. It is related to the nature of mathematics, which is present in the mind, and the nature of the universe, which is obviously mathematically structured. But here it is not so. It's a, a statement will have effect on your worldview and effect your action. So, so it is. A, uh, there must be some um, extra than just a mere conviction and belief. There must be more. Uh, this, is, this has a component of will, acceptance, and commitment. And the kufr will be the opposite of the iman. But linguistically, the word kafara, there are the, uh, an interesting discussion this, uh, going on about uh, the word kafara. For example, in uh, in, in the, uh, if you go to uh, literature, say the original meaning of kafar, uh, kafara is mean covering up, covering up or, or shielding or, or something like that. And they give example, for example, that the, the, another name for we, we discussed last time, muflihun al falah, al falah is the farmer, and uh, calling them in the common Arabic language, nobody in an Arabic language since the early time of Islam and the Arabic language since. Uh, the Arabic language became really a, ling a, 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 a common language of all that area. Nobody used the term kuffar for the for the for the, for the fallahin. but in time past it was used. So we have to, uh, and they claim it is uh, one of the meaning of kafir or kuffar is that those who cover the seeds. But actually, fallah is more accurate because the main the main action of the, of the farmer or of the fallahin. The essential action is that they plow. They are the plower, the one who plow. They plow. You have to cut the earth and plow it. That's the essential part. Yes, after putting the seeds to protect it from being picked up by the bears, it will be covered. But this is a second. This is just a, a, the main action is really the plowing. And that's the reason when it says that uh, peace will, will dominate the earth after the coming of Isa, then uh, the people will, will, will break their swords and turn it into plow. So plowing does, so they will turn into agriculture and peaceful activities rather than, than war. So more so calling these the farmers fallah, uh, the one who split the earth and so on, the one who plow is is obviously much more logical and sensible. But still, in obviously in some Semitic languages and uh, possibly also in in, in, in ancient Arabic, uh, kafir or kufar could be applied for the farmer. And uh, people compare that with the, that the word kafr. Uh, like uh, many villages in Palestine, specifically, if you go to the Old Testament, they will kafr, so on, so on, kafr, and so on, so on. And still in Egypt, kafr, shukr, kafr, uh, the village, a main village, is a kafr. It's still used in Egypt quite widely. So it has something to do with that. It appears to me that really we are dealing with two roots, but they became confluential in Arabic. One root is related to farming and so on, and Possibly it was in ancient uh, or some uh, Semitic dialects in time past. It was actually with a, with a uh, pronounced and written with a, in, in their writing, because they don't have the same writing in Arabic writing now. It was uh, actually with the letter P, like in Paul, Kapr. And then in, 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 in Arabic, which doesn't have the P, for example, it was translated into the next sounding letter and close in, 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 the, in, the, in the tongue and mouth position to the kafr. Uh, this is also strengthened by the, by the fact that, for example, the, the, uh, the various uh, translations of the name, uh, name of famous village in the New Testament is a kapr nahum, kapr nahum, kapr nahum, kapr nahum. It is, ka it is kapr nahum, kapr, kapr nahum, and this translated in Arabic kafr nahum, the village of nahum. But in Arabic, it's with fa. In, 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 in Greek, when they translate it to Greek, they said kapar. So it means, it, it hints strongly that the original wording must have been with a P. But it's not available in the current Arabic, the Quranic Arabic, so we will translate it to fa. So may have, this may be going to the origin of kapar, which is adopted in Arabic with a fa. But not by, not by widely spread. So this is another different word than kafara, which is from which is available in Arabic for, for uh, so the, the two roots became coincident because one letter is missing in the Arabic, Quranic Arabic, and was transferred. Uh, that's, that's, that's happens, it's not as rare as people think. It, it's relatively rare, but it, it can happen 
because certain letters have been transposed to another one's next one because not every language has all the consonants like the other language. So the Arabic is missing the P and missing the V. They are not in the, in the current Arabic. And especially missing the G as pronounced by go, ga. But it is used in South Arabia uh, to, uh, to express the jim. Ja, ja is good. Ja, so the Yemeni until now and also the Egyptian, they, when they say Jabal, mountain, they say Gabal. And in, in, uh, in other dialects in Arabic, after the, uh, the, the Quranic Arabic became just only, only classical in the books and the people uh, turned into, into, uh, into uh, various dialects, the Qaf became heavy for many people and they turned it into Ga. Gult, Gult. I say to you, Gult like. So in, the, in Northern Arabia and most of, of, of uh, Arabic countries, uh, Iraq, etc., excluding Syria and Egypt. Syria and Egypt, the Qaf has turned into A. So this happens. And it may happen, especially if it's coming from ancient languages, it may happen that by accident, two different roots co uh, coincide than in, uh, when, uh, when uh, transferred into Arabic. Let me give you an example, uh, which he mentioned. I think, did, did we mention that? Let me mention it again, maybe an expanded. Is that the word Qantar in the Quran? Qantar. And Qantar, bridge. In Arabic, they all, if you go to Arabic, they should say it is coming from a root called Qantar. But they're actually two different words coming from two different roots. The first one is Qantar, which is a weight of measure, is actually coming from uh, the Latin uh, centenarium. Centenarium meaning 100, 100 weight, 100 something. And even in German, it's a single 100 weight. I think if it was in English, they say 100 weight, and it's either 100 pounds or 100 kilo, or hundreds of certain measure, depending upon the measure system they use. But it's 100, it's, a, it's a quite a big measure. Uh, just for a, a, a side information, Qintar in the, in the fiqh tradition, and it seems to be Arabic tradition, is, is 1,200 uh, uh, ounces. And these ounces will have to be ascertained. How much are these ounces in our current measures? And many scholars claim it is essentially either 149 point something or 143 point something kilogram per mother. So it is. It seems to be related to like a, a hundred of another weight in time past, which was like like a, a double of the pound or something like that. Something like that. But this is this is an issue of measures and weights historically, which don't interest us. Is that the word? So it is from centenarium, a centenarium, and and uh, it has uh, even imported this kantar has been uh, in, uh, imported in French uh, with the pronunciation kintal, still in French. But kantar, which seems to be coming from the same root, kaf nun tara, kantar, why kantar, which is mean bridge, is actually from a completely different, but again a Latin word. So this was from Latin in ways and measure. The other one is actually coming from the uh, from, from a root. Uh, which is uh, uh, originally means a hanger where you hang the cloth and then later it would because the bridges at the, at the time of the Roman, the early bridges could not be built except in the arc form so that uh, the rocks will fit, fit together and support each other and carry the weight to the, to the two sides of the rivers. So it has to be like in an arc, like a hanger. So that's how it came, uh, it came. And it is actually coming from another route, which is, let me see where I did write it. Uh, it is, it's, it's, uh, it is uh, written with the C, uh, Singtura, and actually pronounced it Kingtura. Obviously, the Kaf or Kaf Kingtura, and then Kantura, and it became Kantara. So it has completely different word than the centra, centra, uh, the, the one, uh, the centenarium, which means a hundred weight or something. Like that. It's from completely different root in Latin. But when that one was Arabized, it was Kantara. And then allegedly derived from Kantar, and Kantar also derived from Kantar. And Kantar Fulan, Mukantar, Kanatir, Mukantar, like in the Quran, meaning multiple weights, etc. So, so we have one root in Arabic. It seems to be it's one root, one word. In reality, it is just by coincidence, two different words have merged together in one root. So they may be that this kafara is also like that. The one side coming from covering up and uh, uh, seeds covering Amazon farming uh, seems to be uh, coming from kafar, which uh, turned into kafar. And then we have the other one, which means 
denying and not appreciating. And this is the, uh, the, also the other main meaning of kafara in, in Arabic. So, so if I, if I, if I, uh, if I uh, give you some favor, instead of you are thankful, you are rejecting, you, don't, you are not appreciating, that's called kafara. Uh, uh, it is the opposite of shukr, is kufr. So they have the opposite of shukr is kufr. That's one, one, one branch. And from that, most likely it is related to uh, rejecting the, in, in the case of kufr being the opposite of shukr, of thanking kufr. And uh, of the hadith about the woman, they yakfurun al-ashir, they reject the, the, the husband, because you do all whatever you do, but when, when something, they, you feel something, say, I have never seen anything good from you. That is kafar and ni'ma. It's not hard to do with iman and kufr in sharia sense, but non appreciating. So between appreciating and thanking and non appreciating. From that, it's maybe closer to that when they're not appreciating the messenger and his message and rejecting it. Because the message who has, has come, asking uh, people invited to faith, they should appreciate this message and accept it and be thankful by, by acceptance and, and uh, embracing, rather than this believer reject it and refuse it. So it may be closer from that one. So this is the origin of kafar. And also, they, they invoke sometimes poetry who shows that the night is called kafir because it's, it covers everything or because it rejects, it, it, it denies, it is deny, it denies your visibility. So it's more, not because it covers, but because it denies visibility. The night is called the kafir. Uh, it's very rarely used in Arabic poetry, pre-Islamic poetry, and rarely after Islam it has been used. Because after Islam, the word ka, ka, kufr and kafar has been almost reserved for the opposite of iman. Um, and sometimes if it's said kafirun bin ni'ma, then it means he is not appreciating and not thankful. But then he, but he has to say kafir bin ni'ma. Like he's rejecting the ni'ma, meaning he is not appreciating the ni'ma. But otherwise, if there's kafir and kufr is used, after Islam has been invented and was spread everywhere, it has been essentially uh, restricted to that Sharia meaning, essentially unrelated. So nobody uh, in, in other Islamic po in uh, Arabic poetry after Islam uh, calls the night a kafir. But in Jahiliya, they call it in some literal uh, 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 poetry, kafir. Uh, and I, I th some scholars say because it covers up. I don't, I don't think it's because it's covering. I think it's more closely because it denies your visibility. You don't see anything. You are unable to see anything. You are denied the, uh, the, what the, day, uh, uh, the daylight allows you to see everything and, and look around and, and appreciate where you are. But at night, you are denied this possibility. So from this is denial. It's denied visibility. So that's, that's the word kafara. Sharia wise, it is the opposite of Iman. So if Iman is firm conviction and acceptance, then Kufr will be the opposite of that, either rejection or not being convinced and convicted. Question, how can you not be convinced and, uh, uh, and persuaded to believe if you have seen the evidences which are irrefutable and unrejectable, meaning you are rejecting the evidence, if it is real kufr. But it could be happen, happening that you are not aware about some information and you reject it because you don't have any evidence, then you are still technically a kafir in, 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 in dunya sense because you did not even praise the faith because you, do, you are not convinced this is true. You have no, no evidence, no, no sufficient evidence to be sure. Like for example, someone who did not receive enough information about the Prophet of Islam, no da'wah was carried to him in sufficient explanation. Maybe he has struggled to find information, but he couldn't find. Maybe he is sincerely trying to find, but he could not find. Or he found such faulty information, contradictory information, which uh, uh, led him to believe this is evidence is not enough. But most likely, he did not receive enough information. The da'wah was not carried to him in a proper way, in a clear way. The evidence was not put on the table to him in a clear way. So he is having no conviction. So we cannot say he's a rejectionist in the technical sense from those who would expect greater banishment. But his all Asian complicated is related in Akhirah. Who is the kafir for the Akhirah? Well, Allah knows that he has rejected after the evidence have become clear of him, but he decided to reject and decided like the people of Pharaoh, the, the genuine situation is the cover is the cover jihud, rejecting. Not the cover of doubt, you don't have the evidence. Genuinely, you don't have the evidence. But in any case, technically, 
it, it, it is, it is uh, if you don't have the evidence, you don't believe in that thing, then you, you have technically in dunya, in the dunya term. So someone who does not pronounce shahada is a kafir. Many, many people feel offended about that because they confuse the issues about the description in dunya and description of akhirah. Description in akhirah, punishment in akhirah, is based on someone who was genuinely rejected after the evidence of uh, uh, clear presented to him and he is convinced that it's true, but he said, no, I'm not going to accept it. For whatever reason, this prophet is not from my tribe, like many Jews. He's not from Bani Israel. He's not going to accept a non-Israeli prophet. Or this one is not from my race. Or this one is not from my liking. Or that's what he brings, the commandments he brings, I don't like them. They make my life miserable or difficult. But clearly he is a prophet. I'm not going to follow. No, I'm not going. I'm going to reject him or it will endanger my power position. I have a choice, either to stay in power, like the people of Pharaoh, when they said, are we going to follow or believe two men who are, who and their people are slaves of us? Are we going to follow slaves after we have been the masters and the kings and the rulers? It's out of question. No, we're not going to give power just for two men who, uh, uh, for two human beings who, who, who belong to a nation of slaves. It's out of question. And the Quran says about them, they were convinced internally that's true. There's no doubt that's what we see is true. And it is not, uh, not, not magic. And it's definitely of some supernatural origin, but they decided to reject and remain stubborn to protect their, 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 their way of life. Like they say in another place, say, uh, these, these two guys, we must say they are two magicians. They, they have come to take power and uh, get away with your ideal, uh, optimal way of life. Our way of life is optimal. It has been going on for thousands of years in Egypt, and we are the, the biggest power on earth at the time, especially the time of Musa, if it has been the time of, some people, Ramses II, is more accurately, Mothud, Mr. Dad, which is the peak of pharaoh power in Egypt history. The, the greatest pharaoh in, in human history is Tehut, Mr. Dad, and in that time, Someone from a slave nation comes to us and want to get our way of life upside down. There's no way, no way, no way we're going to give up with well-established way of life is going for a thousand years. No way. So that's that's uh, so. In that sense, the genuine cover, the real cover, is the cover of uh, which is having the repercussions in Akhira, is the cover of denial. In dunya, when classifying people of Muslim and kafir, not in the sight of Allah and Qiyamah, is. The issue of uh, of uh, of so tasdiq is included. Someone who genuinely was not witnessing that Muhammad is Messenger of Allah because he did not see enough evidences or no evidence, no good evidence have previously to him. And generally, many people or no evidence reach him. Maybe he's not aware of what the Prophet ﷺ. Can we say he's a believer? Who is definitely not? Is he a kafir in the sense? Yes, because he did not hear. He did not pronounce Allah Allah Muhammad Rasulullah. But is he a kafir in the sense of akhirah in better voice? That's another issue. So this confusion uh, of, of these the terms between the issue of, of technicality in dunya to, according to the, the ruling of, of sharia, for example, there are certain issues which cannot be like, for example, you cannot uh, uh, marry a kafir woman, for example, etc., etc., etc. All of these are related to the kufr as in the ruling of dunya. It's not related to what's really in the heart or it's the issue of akhirah. So that's, that's, that, that's important to keep uh, uh, separately, but let us see in, in this, uh, he mentioned certain people who are definitely genuinely careful in the sense of dunya and akhira, and this is by rejecting faith and it's stubborn denial of truth. And their stubborn denial is so firm and they bent on denial as uh, Muhammad as I translated. So it doesn't make any difference. Either you warn them or you don't warn them, they will not believe. So give up on them, don't waste, because the Lord was worried about them. Most of them were his cousins and, and relatives in Quraysh and so on, and by, by natural, and the, the, the boy, boyhoods or, or uh, childhood friends, and, uh, and, and uh, like most of the Quraysh, so you, you, feel, you, feel, you feel attraction to them, you feel caring for them. Those in Mecca who are directed further and now preparing for war and ready to fight, they Give up on them. Don't waste your time. It does not mean that he was not uh, <coughs> sending message to them. So every Quran which comes in Medina, he sent uh, someone uh, with the Quran to Mecca 
And this someone contacts some of the Qurayshi leadership, ask him for a covenant of security that he can come, stand on Safa or in some place, and read the Quran and leave. <laughs> so it's not that he's not, they are not receiving what Quran comes down. They are receiving it regularly, but don't waste your mental energy and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and feelings on them because and this does not mean necessarily that every one of them will not become a believer, but in general, this is <clears throat> like, uh, if, if Allah mentioned a category of people in generality, it does not mean that it applies to every single one of them, but it applies to the majority of them, and the, or to the leadership of them. Because you know, some of these uh, who, who did not embrace faith, uh, and, and uh, when the ayah came down, the early time of Medina, later on they became Muslims. And some of them, their Islam and their, their, their genuinity of Islam and the devotion is beyond doubt. And uh, for example, Khalid ibn Walid, take an example, at the time he was one of these staunch, uh, but we know from the, the way he embraced Islam later that he is really, the ayah does not fit to, uh, to him. The ayah did not fit to him because he did not have, the evidences were not present in his mind enough to, then that's the reason when he immigrated before, uh, before uh, the conquest of Mecca, and he was the leader, one of the leader of the of, of the uh, army uh, 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 brigades in the invasion of Mecca. Uh, and he met with someone, I think, Amr ibn Aas, and said, "It is now clear this man must be a prophet. It can't be what we are claiming." As so he was he was not convinced that he is a prophet. So he was not rejecting after conviction. He was not yet convinced. He did not see enough evidences. And then when the evidences came clear. To him, very late, but came. Okay. So we could say Khalid bin Walid is one, not, not one of those. About others, we cannot say that unless we have a clear statement from the Prophet Sallam that they are true believer and they will continue being true believer until they die. For example, in the case of Khalid, we have the statement that Khalid is the sword of Allah who Allah set down on the Mushrikeen. And this is uh, has been verified all of his life and even on even his death. Interestingly, some people, when he was dying, he say, I'm dying in my bed like a camel. Although I have 80 injuries in my body, I still survived. And I die like a camel in my bed without uh, uh, enjoying or, or getting the rank of shahada. The reason for that, so someone, I don't know who said that, and, and, and I say, he could not have possibly died in battle because if he the sword of Allah set down on the mushrikeen, the sword of Allah cannot be broken in battle. But it can rust if it is in, in its sheet, or it is like normal death. But dying in battle is not, is not conceivable for him. But Khalid did not recognize this aspect, so he was, he was unhappy to die on, the, on bed while all his companions died in battle. But that does not mean that he has the, the reward, because he wanted shahada sincerely, he has the reward of shahada, almost certainly, but he could not gain shahada because the fact that the seed of Allah cannot be broken in battle. And if you are broken in battle, you are, you, are, you, are, you are not a sword, but you are not a sword of Allah. Sword of Allah cannot be broken. Hamza, for example, was called the lion of Allah and the lion of his messenger. But lions can't be called. Can be, can be killed, can be hunted, and so on. But not the sword of Allah. Lion of Allah can be, no problem. Lion of Allah is a lion. A lion can be hunted and can be killed. He's the king of the forest, but he can be killed and hunted. But not the sword of Allah. Sword of Allah cannot be broken. But this is just a side remark about that. So we could say he is not covered under this. Because it, uh, later on we have so so only those who really so we can see the ayah is really addressing those who in stubborn denial after they have convinced in the bottom of their heart that this is a messenger but we're not going like for example Abu Jahl said clearly to someone listen we have competed with Bani Hashem in all aspects of leadership they cared for the pilgrims from their money we did the same they we they slaughtered and made big, big uh, uh, tables for the passers-by, we did the same. In every competition, we competed with them until we became almost like two horses who are in the, in the front competing. Now they come say, we have someone getting revelation from heaven. It's impossible to get something like that. There's no way. If we accept that, mean we have accepted that Bani Hashim have succeeded and they, they became the, the superior sub-tribe of, uh, of Quraysh. There's no way we can catch up with them for all eternities. So we are not going to believe in him, whatever happens. So clearly he knows that, that uh, this is the messenger receiving the revelation from heaven, but it's out of question. I'm not going to accept it. I'm going to reject it. 
so this one was killed in in, in Uhud as a kafir, in, in Badr as a kafir, while Khalid definitely was not of that type. Anyway, but this is a small historical remark. So are these known to uh, they, these who saw an alayhim and that when I'm to drum are they known to the Prophet Salam in, in their individuality? Maybe, maybe not. It's not necessary. Allah is not obliged to tell him who are these kafir who are will not ever believe. It's just this leadership and these hostile kafirs don't waste your in, uh, energy on, on warning him on or grieving that they are not accepting the warning because whatever you do, they, uh, they are not going to become believers, they're not going to embrace faith. So that's there's no necessity that Rasul knew or some, some of them by, by name, one by one. Not necessarily. The same like the Munafiqin Medina. We'll come to the Munafiqin, inshallah. He knew some of them, and some of them were unknown to him. So, next ayah, we will get us back to the issue of the actions of Allah and the Qadr, but we will discuss most of it, so we'll just uh, do a less, just a hint in this again, because it's very important. Uh, and it also shows that the uh, rejection of this translation, which they do is destined to be unfaithful. No, there's no destiny for that. This is by choice and so on. This is a, a faulty theory of Qadr. The next thing is, خَتَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ أَسَمْعِهِمْ Allah made a seal, khatama, sealed on their hearts, sealed their hearts and their, and, uh, and their hearing. In addition, on their eyes, there is cataract, there is a gishawa, there is a, there is a, a blurring thin layer which is blurs the vision, and they will have a great punishment, huge punishment. Now, Khatam Allah, again, we repeat what we said about Mimar Zaknaum. We mentioned that the first time the action of Allah, uh, how to interpret this action, which will, not, which will protect us from falling and misunderstanding the way Allah controls the universe and how issues of Qadr and Qadha work out. We said, as a general rule, action attributed to anybody except, except Allah means immediate action. Because by necessity, it must be his action. There is no reason to attribute to give the asanam. But actions attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those testified by the Quran. We should examine this last time or that. Could be meaning immediate action. Like, for example, turning the snake, the, the, the Moses take it to a snake. That's an action immediately. It's a supernatural action by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that moment. Because the snake could not have turned by itself. That's impossible. It's rationally impossible. Not only physically, physically, it's physically impossible anyway, but rationally impossible by itself. So it must be Allah commanded it to turn into a snake that stick that day. That's immediate action at that moment. But it could mean by qadr and creative action in the universe. So khatam Allah, Allah sealed their heart and their, and their eye. It could be also in, in, in this situation could be also as a reaction, an immediate action of Allah as a punishment for previous failing and rejection. But I prefer the first invitation. Allah said their hearts and their, the, the hearing, meaning still their hearing, not the physical hearing, the, the, the hearing in the sense of hearing and benefiting what you hear, the understanding what you hear. So it's part of the related to issue of qalb, the understanding what you hear. The same with the, the blurring of the eye, not the physical eyesight, but the, that you don't see, they don't have the internal insight, it's blurred. So the internal power of insight, which is part of the heart, technically, and the part of the, of the, of the mind, which is expressed as heart in the, in the Arabic, in the, mostly in the Quran and Arabic language, but sometimes expressed otherwise, but mostly as heart or fuad. Could be, some could say that because they rejected faith and became stubborn, Allah sealed the heart and they were, they, they, they will became unable to, to benefit from that what they hear and unable to overcome the blurring of the internal inside. That's a possibility. I prefer the other one said, their hearts and their uh, 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 hearing in a, in, in a sense of understanding the meaning of what is being heard and their eyesight in the meaning, in the, in the sense of un, uh, appreciating the, in, uh, the insight of that what you see inside, behind what you see, and beside what the, the internal uh, eyesight, the internal insight, has been sealed because the system of the universe, as Allah created from the beginning, taqdeer, is so that if a conscious being who has a free will 
see the truth, is convinced that's the truth, and reject it, then the natural reaction of his mind and soul is being in denial and self-justification. He will not be able to overcome that again. And that's the meaning Allah khadam ala qulubim. He created the system so that by necessity, a conscious being who has free will, if he sees the truth and decides to reject it stubbornly and persist on that, then there's no way back for him from there. Because how you can go back from that? There's no way. That's the meaning of khatam Allah. By taqdeer, by the qadr, in the creation of the universe, it is so that the system works this way. While if you accept the truth and commit to it, this will improve your mental capability, will improve your insight, and make you capable to see more guidance and to see more facts. So you have, you have a set of established firm facts. You accepted them. And then you can build on them and get more facts and more knowledge. The same like even with sciences. Just neutral, cold sciences which has no religious connotation. If you do an experiment, achieve a certain result, verify it, convince that it's correct and you accept it and embrace it, then you build further experiments and use that to interpret the new one, then you can add more to your knowledge and you advance. If you don't do that, reject that one because it doesn't fit your, maybe an inherited religious belief or something like that, you get stuck. You will not be able to go back. That's a general feature of the Qadr and the way the, the finite minds and the finite will works. Obviously, none of that applies to Rasulullah because his knowledge is unlimited and he's the believer in his own knowledge. There's no way this could be any denial because he's the truth. And clearly, he's embracing all the truths which he had known to him as given. So this cannot, cannot, uh, cannot, cannot conceivably happen to Allah SWT. So this is only for the finite minds. I find. So this one interpretation is that the qadr of the system is like that. So the khatam meaning in the creation and the taqdeer and the fashioning of the universe, it is so that this will happen. Another interpretation is that because of that, Allah acts separately and and seal her. In, in certain situation or the race situation, there could be a specific act from Allah Sallallahu Let me give an example for that. We said mentioned once in the discussion of Qadr, and I think, yeah, well, we can, we can, we still have enough time for that. When the, our theory of Qadr, which is the correct theory, inshallah, according to the Quran, we, we, as we, uh, uh, when we go along, we will be have more evidences accumulating and refuting the, the theory of Jabr that everything and all action has been predestined uh, to creation. There is not all action, only the system of the universe and the proportion and the taqdeer, but not the specific action. Space and action are potentiality. They emerge according to the situation at that moment, uh, uh, specific uh, uh, and, and the action of the people at that time and their choices. But within the framework of a taqdeer of a certain universe with certain features. And we're under the control and dominance of Allah SWT. So the, the future is, is under Allah's dominance and control. Not knowledge in certain manner, manner of specific events, no. But under Allah, all possibilities are known to Him and all of them under complete control and dominance. So let's give me an example of that. We may be the under reputation that Allah did certain action in certain situation, which is obviously not part of the taqdeer. It needs some divine action immediately. And this will be then essentially an aspect of supernatural, which has, uh, has miraculous aspect, but it may be not seen easily like that. That one is what many old qadari were discussing and objecting to is that Abu Lahab is, 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 is a loser and all what he has uh, accumulated of wealth and or earnings will not benefit him. Sayasla, he will join a, he will he will join a burning hell. And his wife, Muhammad Hatafi Jidi Hablu Masad, that's we don't concern about the wife, let us concern about because the wife is not promised hell in that sense, but some people did adjoin it to him, but the one who says that, that have, and some people who are in Marat Muhammad Hatab also will join. Some people say, No, 
it's a condemnation of certain behavior of his. But let us get certain one that the one who will join hellfire for sure is Abu Lahab. Question. Definitely, if that would have been decided already and done and known at the creation of the universe, then Abu Lahab can say, it's done before I'm even creative and make any choice. That's one of the strongest uh, arguments against to the so the Qadr of Ash'ari and this is essentially Jabr. It can't be. I didn't have any choice. Because it's already known to Allah and he decided it will happen. There's no way you can't have any choice. The choice is fake. So this is a very grievous objection, which is correct objection in, in the proper analysis. But what has happened? Because of Abu, 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 Abu Lahab's rejection and uh, insult to the Prophet and hostility, is his uncle. Allah revealed this. The moment Allah revealed that, it cannot be undermined. He has to join the hellfire. So there is no way for him to step back and embrace faith. In that, Allah made it so, by made it action that he is sealed. This specific case, he was sealed and made unable to repent. Not only that, he made also unable, not only him, also the rest of Quraysh, to think about a trick like say, okay, now I can catch Muhammad. It's very easy. I just go to him and say, I have repented. Get me out of the hellfire. He would have refuted Muhammad right away. Say, Yaslam but no, no provision for repentance there. Sayasla, he was going to Geneva. And Sa even immediate, not so Fayasla, Sayasla. Making it as if it's immediately. But also the Qurayshi, they, they have some, 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 some people of, of considerable intelligence and, and, and cunningness. Allah ordered and sealed their mind from recognizing this trick to come to ourselves and put him on the spot. Although they tried to put up with many things and tried to catch and, and find any faults or counter arguments for almost everything. Like, for example, in the, when, uh, when Abu Asha said, uh, said uh, the Quran said, If they were, 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 the firewood of the hellfire, you will enter it forever. Qurish immediately comes to him, oh, huh, we call you Muhammad. What you are saying, Isa ibn Maryam is a prophet, he's not going to Jahannam. And the people are worshiping him, worshiping him. <laughs> so he must be has hasab Jahannam. Allah mocked him in the Quran, ma darabuhu laka illa jadalan, bal hum qawmun khasimun. They just make that as for pure jadal, because it's clearly that, that innakum he addressing what you are ta'buduna min duni Allah, hasabu jadal. Those who you worship beside Allah, who are accepting your worship and declaring them to be deities. These are the ones who are going to help her because clearly he's not speaking about the stones and the ice. The stones of ice are irrelevant. That's not what they have no feeling. For them, hell fire, no fellow, there's no difference. The stones are being formed even by, by something close to hell, like the, the deep in the earth. That's, that's not the issue. The issue is that those who accepted to be, like for example, kings who believe, uh, attribute to them the right of legislation and that's so absolute sovereignty. And the people worship them in the sense they regard them as Lord beside Allah. They will, they will, they will, they will be there. Before, if they don't repent before that and cease of, the, of this uh, uh, huge crime, they will end in hellfire. So, uh, so the Qurayshi are not, are not at loss of trying to find faults and find uh, points of, of contention and for, uh, points which may be questionable and, and, and uh, uh, you, you can bring some objection to it and so on. In the case of Abu Lahab, None of that has happened. Neither he, uh, he uh, came to this idea, nor any of the Qurayshi, the most cunning, some of them, they're quite cunning and unsophisticated, came to that idea, which make us conclude, really, this is one of the, uh, of the signs of the, of the Prophet ﷺ. It's, it's a considerable sign. If you look at it uh, analytically and very deeply, that all Quraysh, with all their attempts, to, to refute him and all attempts to, to uh, kill his, his quality. And all tricks they use, for example, when this Amr ibn Asr and some others to, uh, to, uh, to Najashi, uh, try to, to uh, get, uh, get uh, uh, the, the Sahabu their handed over. They did not leave any trick. And when they felt that Najashi is inclined to accept them, 
they came next day Abu Amr said, I am going to tell the judge something which will end that they will expel them and destroy them. And the one who, the one who with him said, don't do that, they are still our cousins. I said, no, no, I'm going to do it. And they told him, you, you are fooled by these people. Do you know what they say about Isa? They say he's a slave, he's a servant, he's not a god, he's not a lord, like we say. And he invited them to come and they read Surah uh, uh, Maryam. That's the second meeting, but there was a first meeting and second meeting, if you get the story in more details as it has happened. Because sometimes the story is mentioned in one summary as it's one session. No, it was two sessions. And they were worried and they would just say, we, we are going to tell him the truth, what we have received from our messenger. And they told him, that's what we believe in Isa, that he's what, what Surah Maryam said. He's, he's, a he's a created slave like anybody else. Is. And then Najashi approved that and obviously his, 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 his uh, uh, bishops and uh, priests were upset and they started snorting like like pigs and then slowly slowly then spread all of the country and there was a revolution someone led the revolution against this uh, this kafir najash and heretic and tried to double him but he's, he did not succeed but his zalanti soul is now also also so uh, the amr ibn as and co and all these other in Quraysh, they they then not like intelligent and diplomatic skills and, and cunningness they could but they all of them such a simple trick that don't come in their mind. We can't say here, definitely Allah, they better their mind from thinking this way, completely seal, seal their, 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 their heads from this one because it would have been refuted the prophecy that say, So from that moment, you could say for, for Abu Lahab himself, is he, all he's living and eating and drinking and going, he's essentially like someone who died. Someone who died, the door of repentance had been closed. There's no repentance for him. He's dead. He's alive physically and so on, but he's essentially, for, in a spiritual sense, meaning he's like a vegetable, like those who are in a coma until they pass away. They may be still having biological functions, but they, they cannot perceive and they cannot uh, even have any possibility of repentance. The same applies for him. But he looks like as he you know, left, right, center, and he can repent and can do things and so on. But in reality, he is not. He is dead. He's a living dead, a zombie. He's moving in the world like a zombie. And the Quraysh Hussein using this occasion to put the Prophet on the spot and defeat him, they were also turned into zombie in disrespect only. But anything else is going by the normal system of the universe. Some of them are in stubborn denial. They will be killed in Uhud, in Badr. And some of them are still not convinced like Khaldim al as we know later from him that he were convinced much later and woke up to, 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 the, to the reality woke up from like from a slumber and then even embraced Islam, became the sword of Allah who has been put down on the mushrikeen and the disbeliever until he died as a good believer and uh, etc. So that's, that's going by the system the verse by choice and so on. So that's, that's a, 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 a nice point about this khatam Allah ala qulubim. So it could be, we cannot, we, we cannot exclude that some of them after they have been stubborn denial that Allah sealed them by a, by a supernatural act but we cannot see it outside. We cannot see it outside. In the case of Abu Lahab, we, we see it outside and Quraishi being denied the possibility of playing that trick and refuting the Prophet Asra, we, can, we, we, we see it and we can conclude that it's really supernatural and miraculous. In the other things, it could be that, it could be otherwise. But the general interpretation for this one is that that's the, that's the, the way, that's is the, the, the ceiling of Allah, the action of Allah relate to that Allah allowed it to happen according to that what he decided in the, of the system of the universe and the nature of free will and the nature of, of the uh, finite and minds at uh, the creation of the universe. Uh, it has been decided and this attribute that he sealed, yes, he sealed it because he created the system which leads to uh, the sealing. And uh, so it is referring to qadr and creation, not to immediate action. So that's it. So it's uh, that's that's one example also that the, where people waver when they khatam Allah ala qulubihim, they think that there must be some immediate action of Allah Taala, which was not. No, it can be. It has to be always considered that it may be the related to qadr and create and creative action in the universe. But it could be sometimes if there are evidences for it in specific situation could be by immediate action of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in the, either within the system of the universe or in a supernatural way like in the case of, uh, of I believe the case of uh, Abu Lahab and the case of the failure of Quraysh to benefit from this uh, 
really blatant now because nobody was promised hell directly and clearly except uh, except Abu Abu Lahab. None, none of the Quraysh as far as I know, in a well-established way. There may be some stories about some people, etc. as well, but none has been promised that you will end in hellfire clearly face it at his face except Abu Lahab. And still this unique situation, Quraysh could not benefit from it and Abu Lahab could not reverse it or benefit from it. So that's, we could say this is by, by supernatural action of Allah in the universe. So that's concerning Al-Kufar. So Al-Kufar is just uh, getting, uh, do, not all Kufar, only those who have really rejected faith and in stubborn denial, and most likely is addressing the, uh, the leadership and the stubborn Kafir of Quraysh. And some of these may have embraced Islam openly in, uh, in the conquest of Mecca, but remained munafiq secretly and were plotting against Islam Muslim. I don't want to mention names so not to offend anybody, but I, I'm firmly convinced that Abu Sufyan is one of them. But this is another issue. We're not going to do that. This is more analysis from the various reports and narrations and so on, and uh, balancing which one is the more accurate because there have been... Abu Let me give you for Abu Sufyan just a quick hint. Abu Sufyan, there's a narration uh, in, in, about in Yarmouk. The narration is narrated by one of his cronies who, whose father was killed uh, uh, as a, as a stubborn kafir, the Rahazam gave certain names to be killed in any case, even if they're hanging on the Kaaba, the conquest of Mecca. And his father was killed, so we can assume this one is full of hate of Islam and the vengeance. Well, and he's a friend, and his father was close to Abu Sufyan, and he's close to Abu Sufyan, and invented the story, which you find often that Abu Sufyan, during the Battle of Yar Tar Yarmouk, he was saying, Oh, victory of Allah, come close. Oh, victory of Allah, come close. This is one narration. And people, especially so-called Salafi, idiots, obviously, take that as an evidence that Abu Sufyan was a true believer. But uh, the better narration is the narration narrated by Abdullah bin Zubair. All, it's despite all his faults and what's criticism, we can criticize him for his rough character at the time when he was Khalifa in Mecca. He did not have the best, the best policies and not the kindest behavior of the people and so on. Whatever it is, Definitely he is not a liar, and definitely he is not a disbeliever. So, and he's definitely a, a, a Sahabi, despite of all his faults. Abdullah ibn Zubair, and we have this correct isnad, and have all these studies that at the side, it will be published at one day, inshallah. Said, my father, he was then, too young, he was 13 or 14 years old, told him, you don't be best with the body, you are too young, stay here, and ordered some of his, uh, of his slaves, or uh, a Mawali or freed slave, to watch for him, and make sure if in the case that the Muslims are retreating for a reason to take him on a horse and run away until they come back because there was various waves forward and backward. And then he said that I, I convinced them that I'm not participating in a battle, I'm just going nearby on a horse uh, to see what's going on. So I came, I said, I, I, on, on a hill there, on a hill that's in the Yarmouk after the Prophet died, three years after, three and a half years or something like that. And they saw Abu Sufyan, and some other people, and it was far away, and there was too young and too insignificant for them to bother about me. And then Abu Sufyan, any time he sees the Roman attacking, he say, he, he, Abani al-Asfar. Oh, good blonde people, advance. He's happy with the advance of the uh, Roman. And, and then he told, uh, and, and when the Muslim are prevailing, he was upset and say, oh, Wow, for Bani Asfa, they are defeated. So he was obviously, his heart is with the Romans, not with the Muslims. And then uh, Abdullah bin Zubair reports that when my father came back, I told him what I heard from Abu Sufyan, say, Qataluh Allah, may Allah declare him war. Are we not bitter for him, Bani Asfa? We are his cousins. We are his own nation, his own Arab. At least he should be with us as an Arab, not with the Romans. What's he here, Bani Asfa? Qataluh Allah. He cannot leave his kufr and nifaq deep in the heart. So... Maybe Abu Sufyan is one of those. We don't know. But the narration of Ibn Zuhair is stronger and better. And many other indications that Abu Sufyan never really embraced that. But this is a secondary issue. But he may be one of those. Are there others? Maybe there are others. We don't know. Allah is not obliged to tell our their names. Actually, some of those may have been participating in the attempt to assassinate the Prophet coming back from, uh, from, Tab from Tabuk. And the Prophet told their names to Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman and Ammar ibn Yasser, both of them were the Prophet alone. And the Prophet said they wanted to, to, to squeeze the Prophet in, in a mountain ridge and to push pull him down, to get rid of him. 
but I want what I said, notice them and say, look at these people attacking their camels. So Ammar stood in front of them with something uh, terrifying the camels, so they veered out and went in the valley. And the person asked, asked Ammar, did you recognize the people? Say, no, I didn't recognize, but I recognize their camels. I can't identify their camels when we go back down. Say it is so and so and so and mentioned 14 peoples. Do you know what they intend? They say, no, I don't know. Because the Prophet announced nobody should take the mountain ridge, everyone should go through the valley. The Prophet will take the ridge, which is shorter, and can watch how the people are going. The big army, it's difficult to go along the ridge. They say, he's so and so and so and so on. And the Prophet said, said the, the, the Ammar and Hudayfa, no problem. Just when we reach the, down the valley, send to their people to strike their necks. They are assassinating the head of state and the leader of the army. Say, no. I'm not going to do that so the people will not say Muhammad is killing his companions and you don't tell their names, keep it secret. Three of them were there by mistake and they will, they will be forgiven and the rest, I think 11, are enemy of Allah and his messenger in this life and when the day of the resurrection come. So maybe one of them, maybe Abu Sufyan, maybe someone else from the Qurayshi, we don't know. We don't know who are these people. Maybe some of these. We don't know. And Allah does not allow us to know their names even. For a hikmah of Allah SWT. Related to the function of the head of state or the commander of army. Uh, not, not, not to dig people's secret, not spy on people, etc. And not rely on wahi in these issues. These issues have to be relied on evidences in a court of law, probably. Many wisdoms in that, which will come, inshallah, when, you, when Allah gives us enough life, we get to Surah Tawbah, we'll go to the issues related to what the witnesses of the Quran, the, how the revelation can, can, uh, can substitute for a court of law or not. Sometimes it, it did in rare occasions, but normally it is not like that. Normally it's not like that. So the disbeliever deserves these type of disbeliever who are stubborn and who will end in the hellfire in Adab and Adim. They just got two, uh, two, two ayahs. That's enough for them. There's not very much to talk about them. But what, what comes after is those people who are publicly appearing to be a believer and in reality they are not believers. And the Quran spends a considerable number of eyes describing them because the munafiqeen are very complex phenomena and there are various types of munafiqeen. And even here, these two types of munafiqeen doesn't exhaust all munafiqeen. This is only the early ones in early Medina. There's another type which emerged later when fighting at Qital was ordained. Those who prefer to ally with the kuffar, this is like a third category. And that will, will be discussed in Surah Nisa. But we will hint them to, inshallah, next halaqa. So the munafiqeen will take a considerable number of ayahs because the phenomena of nifaq is very complex and needs uh, some, some deep thoughts and some analysis of what's going on there. We'll leave it, inshallah, for next time. And we will cover it, hopefully, all of it in one go. But uh, the Munafiqeen as a more complex, as Ibn Qayyim said, are more like gave the Kafirin two eyes, no more than that. I believe four eyes or something like that, that's all of it. But the Munafiqeen got that big number of eyes because they are a complex and very troublesome phenomena in every society, every ideological society, everywhere in the world. There will be people who are living the society as if they belong to it, but in reality, they are enemy of that system in various types and with various, various, various. Uh, of, uh, forms and and, uh, and public appearances. So I think that's that's enough for today. And uh, yeah, concerning um, concerning uh, the question and answer tomorrow, inshallah, six thirty. Is that agreed upon? Yeah, that sounds like a good time. Okay, six thirty, inshallah, and uh, we'll see that there many complex issues related also to the early Islam and the early revelation and the embracement of Sahaba of Islam. And many, there were maybe quite a number of surprising things. I myself was surprised. It's not completed 100%, but the skeleton is complete. And I will, maybe I will, I will post the, the, the draft also, and then it's completed in due course. But it's, it brought quite a number of worrisome 
narrations and issues of interesting. It's worth, I think it's worth, it's worth doing in that question answer. Even not, not only tomorrow's halaqa, uh, but maybe more halaqas of this type. Okay? Good stuff. Any question for today? Uh, there was the one question, uh, but I think we've covered it anyways. It was with respect to ayah uh, 6 and 7. Uh, in reference to the disbeliever, does this include atheists, agnostics, as well as mushriks? Everything, yeah, everything, yeah. everything who, who, if, if we mean it in the akhirah sense, everyone who has seen the evidence that that, there, for example, there are many atheists who say, if I embrace that and accept that, the evidence is overwhelming, but if I do, then my life will be restricted. I have to obey the messenger. I have to follow. I don't want. I want just to be free to whatever I want. Although the majority, uh, to be honest, the majority of uh, of uh, atheists and uh, uh, they they did not got the evidence on the table presented properly uh, in a persuaded way, so they are in doubt. I don't think uh, this is the majority, but there there, there are many on, on, on the general current and the, and the, uh, especially atheist and the, and the secularist and so on. The general current is that it is a psychological reaction. So they don't want even to say, one way of avoiding the evidence is just say, here's the evidence, say, no, I don't want to see it, I, I have already made up my mind. This is rejecting faith. Because if he's honestly want to see the truth and to, to, to get the issue really under control, then he has to, then he has to at least take a look to the evidence. But if someone rejects it, no, no, I, I, it's clear. This, 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 this Muhammad is, is just mentally deranged. No, no need to waste time with him. That's, that's the rejecting of the evidence because all history and all these followers and all this, there's something there. So the something is worth of scrutinizing. If you reject to scrutinize, you are rejecting the evidence. So by extension to that question, what In about summer. the people? <clears throat> sorry, what about uh, then people who haven't received the message? Are they classified as kafirs too? In dunya terms, in matter of hakam sharia, for example, if someone uh, like in the Amazon and he's, he's obviously pagan, you cannot eat a slaughtering in that sense because you eat only slaughtering of a Muslim. For example, you don't eat slaughtering of the mushrik, mushrikeen. You eat only slaughtering of the Muslims and the people of the book, obviously. It's not very offensive for our subcontinental Pakistani and brothers. <laughs> but that's the truth. So, but those, the slaughtering is not halal. That applies for them. Because in matter of slaughtering, you're not going to ask the people, do you really believe for those who are in Christ? That's, that's not the way it works. You just follow what he's publicly declared. For example, the one slaughtering is a Christian by name and by, by, by society. And we assume that he is a Christian. We're not going to ask him, are you a true believer? Even if there's one slaughtering, is a, the one who doing the slaughtering is a Muslim by name. He may be a, may be a mulhid and kafir internally, but he doesn't say, say publicly. Then we eat it. It's halal for us. The hukm of Akhirah is, is left to Allah SWT, who knows, who has received the truth and sufficient evidence and rejected it, decided to reject, make the decision to reject. So it is it's no good to ask a question what happened to Akhirah and some people indulge in long discussion and fear. some of it looks like as if they are in doubt that Allah will be able to sort things on al Qiyam. I think indulging in that is, is a sign of, of, uh, of misunderstanding of, of the universe and, uh, and Allah SWT. Allah Ta'ala will be able to sort the people of Qiyamah completely to the last atom weight of the Iman and Kufr, to the last atom wave of action. So there's no need to be bothered about that. If it's a matter of Hukm dunya Hukm dunya is like that. <clears throat> like, for example, if you meet an army in the battlefield, an army of Kufar, not every one of them is a genuine Kafir. Some of them may be misguided. Some of them they think they are of the truth. Some of them may be hidden Muslims who are spying on them. Are you going to say, are you one of our spies so we don't shoot you? No, you shoot him. That's it. In the battle, you're not going to decide to question his belief and faith. He is carrying, he is carrying weapons. We discussed that, inshallah, how to deal with the, the Kafir army. He is in the Kafir army. He is part of the Kafir army. You just, you just get him, get him uh, the same treatment like anyone. The independent is strongly Kafir, misguided, misled. Most likely, the food soldiers of the Kafir armies are all of majority misled, but they are fighting. So they have to be confronted by fighting. At the moment someone goes outside and says, Allah, Muhammad Rasulullah, he became Muslim, then he is sorted out. But he has to separate from the army. If he is within the army, that doesn't help what he pronounces. So 
not let us confuse the, the ruling in dunya how to behave and what's the interaction and the ruling in akhirah. Yeah, so that's it. But this will come. Uh, certain aspects of it. that's usually related, mostly related to peace and uh, uh, to peace and uh, war and peace. That's it, mostly. And few issues related, for instance, slaughtering food and things like that, and certain issues of of, uh, of, uh, uh, of food and drink prohibitions. That that's essentially that. In dunya, in akhira, Allah will sort out. You don't need to waste our any internet. Just we know the fundamental, the fundamental definition. It's it's, it's evidence from Quran and Sunnah, and that's it. And we just re refer that to Allah. And even individual persons will not dare applying anything of that uh, uh, to any one of them. And many issues, like for example, the many issues some jihadi and some because they believe in this called had the riddah and all of these things and the apostasy and all these things. Say, what is the ruling about the one who's unknown? Unknown about his belief in in Dar al Kufr. Say, what do you mean in Dar al Kufr? If you mean in the domain of war, then one who is with the Kafir in their army is a warrior. Then let's finish. If you are, for example, walking the street in Britain, which is Dar al Kufr, clearly, it's not the domain of Islam, and you see someone on the street, is he a Muslim, is a Kafir? It's irrelevant. Why are you asking that question? You have no right to kill him, you have no right to do anything with him. He's protected. So, what's the, what is the benefit of that question? Say, what's the ruling about uh, a Say, so someone died suddenly in the street and we want to bury him. If we have no indication that he will end Darul Kufr, no indication that he is a Muslim, then we, uh, th then his people will bury him, his family. If he, leaves, if he leaves a clear message that he is a Muslim, he want to bury the Muslim, then we attend to his burial. So he's not Majhul al Hal has become no. And in Darul Kufr, we are not obliged to bury anyone dead. And if anyone died, and nobody is there to do the burial, because we have to bury the dead or, or cremate it or to get rid of the body and as, as a, 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 a humanitarian act, then we bury him without Islamic uh, uh, funeral rites. We don't know if he's a Muslim or not, so we, do, we, we just, that's it. We just take care of the body, that the body is buried respectfully or, or cremated, whatever it is done. That's it. No more than that. So the question is, what, what is the ruling about the unknown person in Dar al-Kufr is, is a mentally deranged question coming from jihadi persuasion. I think that's Dar al-Kufr is the same like Dar al-Harb. No, it's not. And even Dar al-Harb, if you are, for example, in England, let's assume England is in a state of war with Afghanistan. You are Afghani and coming here. The moment you enter, you have a covenant of security. You are not at war. So you are a ceasefire. <laughs> so, the <question. laughs> so the question is mute. Sometimes there are certain questions uh, posted by some uh, people who have extremism inclination or misunderstanding of Islam, which has is has no product, does not produce any relevant things. So it's about, what's about marry, marrying with them? <laughs> you are not going to marry someone who's unknown. If someone approaches you to, to ask for your daughter or for your sister, then you will have to check who is he, what's his background, and so on. That he's not unknown anymore. And if he's a kafir, say, sorry, we, we cannot give a kafir. So I don't give my sister my kafir. If he's a Muslim, and he's acceptable in manners and in behavior and so on, then you give it, then you agree. After he agreement, obviously. So, so he's not unknown then. But someone in the street, you don't know about him. What is the purpose of the question? Except in the rare occasion that you find a dead body. And mostly in most places in the world, the authorities will get involved and check if this is a normal death or not normal death, and they will trace his family and so on. And more in the, almost so. And even so, even in that case, it will be clear. If someone is having some, some dress which looks like he's a Pakistani or something, they have anything in him indicating that he's Muslim, because he's a Muslim, most likely the, the, the authorities were not able to locate his family. It looks like he looks like a Muslim. Uh, there are certain things which Muslims usually wear. For example, some people wear a hijab. Some people say it's a necklace with Allah name on it. Most likely he's a Muslim. Maybe he's just one who likes that necklace. He's not a Muslim, actually. But based on that, we, we bury him, give him an Islamic burial, and make a janazah on him. This question are usually, uh, uh, especially by jihadi, is, uh, are, uh, are empty and stupid. They don't have any, uh, any, any effect. And any situation where you face this question can be sorted out on its own merits. Like someone says, you find someone dead in, in, in a, uh, maybe he has a heart attack, and he has maybe some some kind of, of, 
or a woman who she's not having hijab, but she has, for example, a necklace with Allah on it. Looks like she may be a Muslim, but maybe she likes that necklace. We don't know, but we can't take the Saqarina and say, even if she has not hijab, many Muslim women are neglecting hijab. Does not mean they're not Muslim. And there's nobody they want there. We, we, the, the family name could not be traced. There's nothing else to identify her. Nobody mentioned any, 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 uh, uh, any uh, disappearance in, in the family and so on. So the Muslim, the next Muslim, so the next mosque can say, well, we claim that she's a Muslim and we'll give her a Muslim burial and finish that matter. That would be all on record. They thought maybe some people will come and they turn out that she was in Pakistan and she liked that necklace and she's not a Muslim. So no, no harm then. What's the harm? No harm then. So many of these questions uh, uh, indicate some kind of either a mentality which someone does not know what Allah will do Yom al Qiyamah, this is very severe and dangerous mentality, or not knowing what to deal with things in dunya because they have a wrong idea about what things to do, like uh, uh, what is the ruling about Majhul al Hal in Dar al Hal. Majhul al Hal is Majhul al Hal, unknown person. He's walking the street, salam, salam, you pass by, that's it. <laughs> what are you going to fight with him? <laughs> <laughs> That's sometimes these these kind of question is, is almost a mockery, but it's it's widespread in some jihadi because they have come from the Wahhabi movement, which is a Khawarij movement. They test the people and faith, and uh, that's that's a famous phenomenon of the Khawarij. At time at time Ali ibn Talib, they used to test anyone passing by. What do you think about Uthman? What do you think about Ali? If you don't say what exactly what they want, they will kill you right away. They call it checking everyone passing. What is your faith? What do you believe? There's a severe uh, transgression and, and khuruj and uh, for an a form of khuruj and, 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 uh, and uh, fighting the, 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 the ummah and those who have the covenant with the ummah. It, it, it even developed into a shasha mukari. And that's what the famous that Wasal ibn Ata, one of the shaykh al-Mu'tazila, was traveling from, I think, from Khurasan toward Baghdad with some of his students. And they saw a bunch of khawarij coming on horses. Say, don't see anything. Let me talk to them. We will pretend to be Christian. When the Khalish came, said, who are you? Oh, we, are, we are from that church there, and we are visiting a Christian conference in Baghdad. But this area is very, we are fearful that we will be attacked, and we are people of them. They say, oh, people deserve protection. And they send the protection uh, uh, platoon with them all the way to the outskirts of Baghdad. <laughs> But if they, if they noticed that they were Muslim, they would have asked them, what do you think about Ali, what do you think about Man, and they will kill them. <laughs> so how things will become upside down. And the fundamental behavior is wrong. Someone walking in the domain of Islam, he's a Muslim or people of them, he deserves all the protection. He should not be asked about his deen or belief or anything. So that's that's it. So, okay. so I warn uh, I, I warn from this kind of question because these kind of questions are like this question: What happens with babies? What happens with this? Don't worry about that. They will be fine. Allah will be able to do that. You don't need to second guess Allah or a dictator. So we say we need the satisfaction. Satisfaction, you know the satisfaction. All those who receive their sin are rejected it deliberately, and Allah knows about them that they're sinful and worthy of punishment will be punished. Anyone else, Allah will manage them in the best possible way, better than we imagine. That's enough, enough. Abdul Basit had a question next. Uh, yeah. AB, do you want to unmute? Yeah, uh, Salam alaikum, Sheikh. Uh, okay, just had a quick question um, whether you had any plans or ha actually whether you have any written tafsir yourself, anything you penned yourself, or have any plans to write a tafsir? Maybe down the road, if we, if we, if we get summarized all of these things, then maybe in writing I'd get this a summary, inshallah. Okay, uh, second thing, just about two modern tafsirs in Arabic. Um, whether you're familiar with Sheikh Wafat al Zahili? Uh, tafsir al-Munir, whether you've read or come across that one at all? Yeah, Wahat al is quite having... I didn't, I didn't read much of it, so, but, but knowing Wahat al and his capability, I think he's, he's, it will be a good modern tafsir. Alhamdulillah, maybe is, maybe, maybe no, should so take a look to it and go through it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Inshallah. And uh, also Ibn Ashur's, whether you've come Ibn Ashur is an excellent one. It's more about the literary aspect and so on, yeah. Okay. Also a, a nice tafsir. 
but uh, when it's mentioned tafsir, I mean the old ones because they contain the sources, al Tabari contains various narrations, al uh, Razi because he contains the various philosophical and ilmul kalam and logic ish questions in extensive way. Uh, al Qurtub, as I said, because I disliked it because uh, he indulged, for example, in uh, in, in our Surah Al Baqarah, the Qimun al Salah. Instead of just stressing that Iqamat al Salah is not just praying, it's more than that, which the ayah, which is the, the one who owns the tafsir. He spent maybe 10 pages about all of the, if someone do taslim before the imam and so on. Essentially, the old fiqh of salah. I don't think this belongs in tafsir. Yes, as I said, there are details, issues about salah and so on, and taslim and the tibar al-imam, they will be checked in book because it will undermine the, the taste of the ayah. If you go 10, 15 pages, just uh, the details of ahkam salah and and what's what's the meaning of completing salah? Is it is it if you join the imam in his rak'ah, his rak'ah is the third, uh, you join him in the third and the fourth. Uh, are you after the third, fourth? You have to obviously to do the rak'ah. You missed in the case of Dhuhr, for example. Is is that is that is your uh, the rak'ah you join is your first, and the when the imam third is your, is, uh, and then you you complete. Uh, uh, you you complete then your your own third, third and fourth, or it is actually it is your third and fourth, and then you are doing the first one and second one after, depending upon the hadith. Atimu waqdu things like that. Ma fatakum fatimu ma fatakum faqdu. Such extremely fine points which are sometimes I would say even empty of sense. It's really empty of sense. I, I it, it, uh, it's just based on two words of the ahadith, fa'atimu or fa'qdu. The most prevalent tradition is that fa'atimu, complete you. you. So you started, you, you, this number one, number two for you, and then you complete your number three and number four, independent which number it was for the imam. You followed him definitely as an imam, but it's your number one, number two. It's more logical and so on. But even even that solution should not be even mentioned in tafsir. That's what made me with Qurtubi a little bit uh, edgy. Ibn Kathir is good in the sense that it's one, one excellent aspect of it is that when he mentioned narrations, like the one in Qurtubi, uh, he, uh, he add to it the one in Qurtubi, or the, the best one in Qurtubi at least, because in Qurtubi some of them are faulty and disconnected and not proper, but the, the solid ones of them. But then he adds from the uh, book, Hadith references, in full, I said, Qala al-Imam Ahmad, and give you that. So this way, you find sometimes, like in Abu Ya'la, before Abu Ya'la was printed and available, people were going to Ibn Kathir to find the narration of Abu Ya'la. Many of the narration of Abu Ya'la were there in the tafsir, with full isnad, with, 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 even, with even better, better, uh, better uh, 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 corrected writing without, without uh, sometimes uh, misspelling errors or things like that. You find something in the old manuscript. So it's a clean version. And sometimes, for example, Abu Ya'la, there's a larger version, a smaller version. There are hadith on, from other collections which has not found until now. They must have been in the larger collection. And Ibn Kathir you know, reported them uh, meticulously and accurately. And sometimes he has good comments, so quite solid and good comments. So this is the, so when I say, talk about the classics. In the modern, Sayyid Qutb is unique because it really gives you the artistic aspect, the, the, the aspects of art and uh, from another angle which has not been addressed before. Like what he calls Taswir al-Fanni, the, the, uh, the art of, 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 uh, of drawing a picture with words in the Quran. Uh, this is because he's, he's a man of literature himself. He's a literary man who, who masters the art of, of, of modern theater and things like that before he became an Islamist. So he can import these aspects, which obviously in his Islamic history were not really given any uh, special standing or, or importance. And also he addressed about the musicality of certain phrases of the Quran and things like that, which the ancient did not do. Really did, 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 did do that. Even the one who spoke about the jazz, they made, they really mentioned the, the ijaz related to, uh, to, uh, to the internal rhythm of the Quran. All the internal rhythm is have considerable amount of, uh, of, of importance. For example, one recent uh, uh, Christian in Egypt converted to Islam because he was just listening. He, he was, his father was a musician and he was taught from childhood music and various, uh, various complicated divisions of music and so on. And he was listening to some neighbors, the Quran from far away. He could not recognize the words but he recognized the, the, the maqamat. 
and it was enough for him to persuade that he embraced Islam because this this internal rhythm ry- and so on is is not uh, cannot be made for cannot be the uh, coming from someone like Muhammad in, in Mecca. It is too high and too sophisticated in internal ry- rhythm and and the, uh, musical uh, harmony to be from a human being at that time of that. And he became Muslim because of that, just of that. So this aspect nobody has studied. Said so Qutb mentioned some of these things, but mostly about the pictorial description. That's the reason I mentioned Sayyid Qutb. But from the moderns, few of the moderns are, for example, al Shankiti, the Quran, the Quran, Abu al Bayan, Allah Tafsir. And also the other one, Dafi Ham al Tarab, refuting the, 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 the misconception of confusion in the Quran or contradiction, showing that they synchronize very well. In many, in many in many areas he did quite a, a good amount of work although he could not withdraw himself from being classical and being maliki and being ash'ari uh, so he could not and ash'ari converted more to half salafi or something like that uh, he has to take care of that the people reading will will uh, will not be offended or something like that it is not a revolutionary and there are some one for example there's the Farid Wajdi in his, uh, which try to, to make the Quran like describe all these scientific aspects as well. This is going to an extreme. Uh, this, is, this is a dangerous approach. And this is done very, very meticulously and care cautiously, not literally. So that, things like that. Mm-hmm. But Wahab al no doubt, his, his scholarly, scholarly standing is very high. And I think Tafsir Munir is a, is a very good one, but I did not indulge in it very much. Maybe I should do more, inshallah. Take a look to more. But Tafsir is never, is never really because, because, you know, Quran, uh, uh, the miracles of the Quran and, and its, its, uh, its amazement never ends. And uh, it will never become old by repeating and so on. So there will be always new aspects which uh, you will detect day by day, generation by generation. And the Quran says, says, says we, will show, we will show them ayat, our eyes in the afaq, in the horizons, and in themselves. So should we, the, the aspects of comparing that with scientific developments and so on is of importance, which could not be neglected. So that they will know that this Quran is the truth. And Allah said, Your Lord is witness of all things. This is the witness of Allah. This, the more you go forward, the more we'll be, we'll be detecting things which are uh, surprising and uh, never expected before.